Okay, first of all, I just want to do a shout out to everyone who already shared a review on my podcast because in the last few months this podcast grew a lot and I started it in 2021 and so many new listeners are here listening to my podcast and I'm so happy to see this, to see that it's growing, to see that it's helping people. So if you are new here, if you didn't leave a review yet, it would really help me if you do. Um, so more people will see the podcast and it can help even more people. So in this episode, I want to talk about vision therapy. Because in my first year, I didn't realize my vision was affected as well. And I know it sounds maybe weird, but I always thought it was the concussion and not my eyes that were affected. And I just want to bring this up for everyone who's never heard about this because I wished I would know this earlier in my recovery. So how do you know if your vision is affected? You can question yourself if you are struggling with screen time. Do you have a hard time reading a book? Or do you struggle to focus on objects or are things passing too fast when you're in a car? Do you um, get nauseous very quickly when you move too fast? When this is the case, your eyes might be affected as well. And this happens to 60% of all the concussion survivors. And the moment I found out my eyes were affected was when a doctor brought this up two years after the accident and then he referred me to an optometrist. And for example, when I was in a car, things were passing so fast, uh, it started to blurry, there was this tunnel vision, or when I tried to focus on an object, um, it stayed blurry. So especially objects that were far away, I it seems like I couldn't focus on it. It really felt like I was using a camera and I tried to zoom in because when you use a camera and when you zoom in, then you normally see first a little bit of a blurry, blurry vision and then it starts to be very, and becomes very sharp because it's focused on the object. But for me, it felt like I was stuck in this adjusting phase. So I couldn't focus on objects that were very far away. An example, for example, as well, what, what happened when, uh, when I was in a supermarket, uh, when I was walking there, um, it felt like I was in this tunnel because everything around me started to get blurry. So if you feel the same way, I would really recommend reaching out to an optometrist. I can really recommend going there because I had vision therapy for over a year. But I just want to make sure you go to a neurooptometrist who specializes in TBI or concussions because I went to three normal optometrists first and they couldn't find anything. I was there and they told me, or well, they did a lot of tests and they told me, no, your eyes are fine um, and that, that's it. They sent me home. <laughs> Um, but someone who specializes in concussions found so many issues and we started working on that. So it was for me mainly the focus issue. I had this um, fixation disparity. I worked with prism glasses. I did many vision exercises. So I did vision therapy for about a year and this is what it looked like. So I started with syntonic light therapy first. And then you look into colored lights and the colored lights help to stimulate the visual symptom while also changing the brain's uh, biochemistry. So this can really improve balance in the nervous system and eye clarity. So after doing that for about a month, I started eye exercises. So I went to his office once a week to do the exercises together and then did the exercises at home as well. And these are different exercises. So for example, looking at something close to me and then looking to something far away from me. 
So uh, this was one exercise or following a pole with my eyes and um, yeah, following it for like a minute. Uh, well, I did all those exercises. There are different ones for about seven months. And one side note here is that you really need patience with vision therapy. Because a lot of people, they, uh, they tell me, I started vision therapy, but I don't feel any improvement. So I think I will stop doing this. And I totally, totally understand. I felt the same way in my first three months. I didn't feel improvements. It costs a lot of money as well. So I thought, okay, maybe I should stop because I'm not feeling any improvements and I don't want to waste any more money or energy on this. But someone encouraged me to keep going. Um, and I, so I did because I really wanted to take this chance to feel better. Uh, so I continued and my first improvement started after three months. So you really need some patience here. <laughs> and I know that's hard, but I, what I hear often is that people experience improvements after a few months. And then in the last few months, so after those seven months of doing exercises, I wore prism glasses and I wore specific ones, the yoked prism glasses. Uh, these are for fixation disparity um, and this helped me a lot as well because we're all so different uh, I just want to mention that there is no eye treatment that fits all so that's why you start doing tests to see where the problem lies for you and once you have that outcome you can start of course your personal treatments I just hope that this just give you an idea of what it is, or maybe that you now realize, hey, my eyes are affected as well. I need to go to a neurooptometrist to do some tests. Um, so yeah, that's the reason why I thought, okay, let's share more about this. Um, so if you have any questions left for me, please reach out to me on Instagram, or you can um, send me an email at info at the concussion community.com. Always happy to answer your questions. Um, and last but not least, I'm just very excited because next week I'm opening the doors to the concussion community again. And in this community, you uh, can connect with other concussion survivors. There are over 200 right now. And uh, there are a lot of concussion experts who created uh, different classes and courses um, just to provide you with the correct knowledge when it comes to concussions because there is so much information out there online and some of the information is not even um, the correct one and can do more harm than good and this is something that I experienced as well in my recovery and I just want to make sure that everyone gets the right information to move forward because I think that's the most important thing to focus on the writing uh, just to make to make sure that you're doing the writing and um, yeah that's why I created this community and it, this is already here for well 2021 I started it and right now uh, it's already grown to over 200 active people so I'm very happy to to help them in this community so next week is an opening week for new members and after that week we will close the doors again because it makes it easier for me to manage everything. So only a few times a year I'm opening the doors and um, new members can join. So next week is one of them. So if you are interested I would love to see you there. You can add yourself to the waitlist. The link is here in the description of this podcast so you'll get a notification when the doors are open. So I can't wait to see you next week in the community.